guys and welcome back to Cue the Confetti. This is a new series we're going to be doing called The Basics and we can't wait to get started with you so come along. Alright, like I said, we're doing a series called The Basics and that's for the grown-ups out there who've decided to go ahead and keep their preschooler home this year. But you may be looking at your toddler or preschooler and going, what do I do now? So I'm going to teach you what you do now. The first series that we're going to be doing is over Play-Doh. And I've made um, my two ingredient Play-Doh, which uh, you can see on a previous video and I'll link that description above. But it's just two ingredients, cornstarch and cheap hair conditioner. I like it better because you don't have to cook it and it does doesn't dry your hands out. Um, if you keep it, you can keep it a couple of weeks, like probably three weeks, as long as you keep it in an airtight container, like a Ziploc baggie or a Rubbermaid. And we just really like it. It kind of has, here I'll show you some of it. It kind of has non-Newtonian properties, which means it has the um, attributes of a solid and a liquid. It's that cornstarch does that. Um, but it really, because the other ingredient is conditioner it really keeps your hands kind of soft and of course it smells divine I got uh, tropical coconut through suave and so that's what we're gonna be using today all right I've got my helper here Gentry and we're gonna show you some of the things you can be doing with your child playing play-doh of course you can always buy play-doh but I think the biggest mistake parents make in general is buying all of the extra kits and things like the play-doh kits which are good fun but it doesn't allow for imagination and really all you need is play-doh a couple of cookie cutters we've got a bat Oklahoma and Texas a rolling pin and which tennis. which if you don't this is a rolling pin that I think I got out of a Melissa and Doug play-doh kit and then we're gonna do scissors as well but if you don't have a rolling pin a plastic works as well and, and it can cut it you're right it can good job good thinking Gentry. the reason play-doh is, is so important to preschool play is it really works the muscles in the hand we are working toward one day writing and drawing and we really have to get these muscles working in order to do that so play-doh helps get those little fine motor skills going by squeezing it and things like that and I've had a lot of parents go, okay, cool, I've made Play-Doh, but now what do I need them to do? Well, of course they can play. That's as basic as you uh, want it, make them play. If they don't seem to know what to do, challenge them very first to roll a ball. Show them how to roll a ball, and you can get them to roll a hundred little balls. You can call them eggs, you can call them basketballs, whatever their interest is. Everybody likes something in the shape of a ball, because it rolls. This will be unicorn egg. Oh, a unicorn egg, I like that, Ginger. Or, or like, um, an axolotl egg. An axolotl egg. Real axolotl eggs are really tiny. But rolling that ball, and do you see how it? they're really using those fine motor skills to roll a ball? Here, I'll make it tiny. It's actually really difficult to roll a ball to get that coordination going of the swirling. The other aspect of playing with Play-Doh is that it's sensory play. If you are a parent or in a grown-up around a um, neurodiverse child, you know a lot about sensory. You have neurotypical children, they need sensory play as well. Studies have shown that since young people have had internet and screens in their life, they're not getting outside as much and they're not receiving that sensory input that they need so much and play-doh is a great way to introduce sensory input your child might be apprehensive to touch it or squeeze it they're sensory avoiders they don't like the feel of their hands being dirty or paint on their hands they don't what? like sticky or you I might don't... have somebody like gentry who's sensory seeking and always sticks her hand in something gooey gooey likes water play doesn't mind getting dirty plays in the mud sand play and some kids are it depends on what it is. They like might both. like it. Uh, they, they like both. They might avoid certain textures. They might really love other textures. It's just a, every child is different. So once you get them to roll a ball, next comes snakes. That's what we call snakes. And it's just rolling, rolling, rolling. You get your snakes and your worms. That's what I do. And this, because it's non-Newtonian substance, it really it's, is pretty cool. Yeah. I'm gonna put this away for me so yeah. Do you want to see? Show them how you roll a snake. <laughs> Gentry's made her snake and now yep. don't break it because I want you to do something else with it. We I think I know. 
what you're gonna ask. Him. What am I gonna ask you to do? This. Nope. I want you to take those scissors over there and I want you to cut it up. Cut. Cut. Another great way. Pretend to... it's butter. It is a lot easier to cut Play-Doh than it is to cut paper. So it's a great skill. As you can see, Gentry uh, is automatically flipping her hand in to cut. That's very, very typical. So we want to teach them to put their thumb through the small hole and their, the rest of their fingers through the big hole and open, shut, open, shut. I'm nah, left-handed, so that. here, open, shut, open, shut. But we want them to sh have their thumb up. Again, it's all about that muscle, growing that muscle right there. This is easier. Cut with your muscle, your thumb up. Thumb up. There, no, your thumb's up right there. Cut right here. Good job. Good job with that thumb up. Awesome. You can even make like a ball of person and I'm gonna make their hair and you're gonna cut their hair. Your make hair really is. long hair. Here's their hair right here. You cut their hair. You're gonna cut it all off? <laughs> you don't cut their head. Do you see what you're doing though? This needs to go up. So you need to cut that way. There we go. We didn't even have a chance to use the rolling pin and the cookie cutters, but they work really well too. And I think I got some B shot of Gentry doing it as well. I hope this helps you uh, think about what you can do with your child while you're playing Play-Doh. It really does not have to be complicated. You don't need all the gadgets. You need two ingredients to make uh, Play-Doh at home and just some things you have around the kitchen, around the house. It really is that simple. The most important thing that you can do with your preschooler right now is play. I hope that you enjoy this series. We're gonna go through all of the basic things that I do as a preschool teacher in the class so that you can be a preschool teacher at home with your child during this crazy year that we're having. I hope that this helps. Please, if it does, hit that like button and subscribe. It is free to you, but it helps us immensely. I appreciate it, and we hope that you celebrate today.